Welcome back everybody to To Restore You. It's Angela and today I'm calling this lovely space my procrastination station because I have managed to find just about everything else to occupy my time today except for doing what was on my agenda which was coming back for episode two, continuing up some bookbinding techniques and we're going to cover our book with the um, upholstery fabric that um, the sample samples that I've got. So before we get into covering the book, I want to um, go back just a second to the book binding techniques. And there was a couple things that I wanted to wanted you to know that might help you that I don't think I mentioned, but you can see that this is um, adhered because this was this book was in really bad shape. And I happen to have, this is called Echo Craft Tape. I have no idea where I got it initially, um, but I was able to find it on Amazon. So I do have the link on there, um, but it is really heavy and it sticks really well. And it's, it's essentially like craft paper, but with adhesive. So this might be something that you would consider using for book binding if you so choose. And then I also have used, I snuck this from my husband. It's a, a roll of his surgical steak, surgical tape from his med bag. Um, but it is almost at like a paper in itself. And this works really well. The other thing that works uh, pretty well, I haven't tried it on a binding, um, but I have used it um, in little tiny projects is, oh, uh, I think it's called athletic tape and it is kind of fabric-esque as well. Um, and it sticks pretty, pretty good too. So these are two alternatives if um, you're trying to just shore up what your, what the spine of your book um, is like and to give it a little more structure and um, durability. So those are two things that you can, you can try. And then the other thing that I wanted to share with you is if you don't, this is like one of the easiest ways, what did I do with it? Um, the easiest way to bind if you have real uh, like very few amount of papers. So now this was, when we did this one, this is a pretty hefty journal and it's all full of wallpaper um, and fabric. So um, it's kind of bulky. Um, I ended up after I had it all glued together, I just used a piece of muslin, which we'll embellish later, um, and did the very same thing. I um, put it on its side, Wrap the muslin muslin around it with the glue base, held it together, um, glued the bottom of the book, and did the same technique that we used yesterday, and then just waited for that to um, to dry, which led to my being um, a procrastinator today. Uh, I really did find a ton of things to do, and one of those uh, was actually. Um, these are all uh, some of my most recent experiment with dyeing papers with Kool-Aid. Here, I'll show you. This is my stack that I did, and I had no plan. I had no real good recipe, um, and I just winged it. My son went and got me every kind of Kool-Aid he could find, and these are spectacular. They're beyond my... my um, wildest dreams. So they weren't ex exactly what I expected. These are very, very bright. Like uh, it looks like a big Easter egg or a rainbow. Um, so I'm looking forward to doing some projects with that. So while I was playing around, I decided to use some of the scraps from that project to show you how to um, bind very like small um little books of paper like this is only four little baby pages so here's all you have to do um you're just going to what well, i don't know what a l e x a is doing over there but she's going crazy um is just do an accordion fold for as many let's just call them signatures as you want 
This is just an itty bitty piece. Oh my gosh, are you on camera? Let's see. Oh yes. Um, I'm just gonna do this this accordion fold all the way. Just well, there we go. Okay, so now what you could do is in each one, let's see if this one fits. Well, it's too big, but that's okay. Um, in each one of these, you could do a baby signature. So like on this one, I just used a piece of my uh, Kool-Aid dyed paper and it was this long and I just folded it in half, made two signatures, two spots for signatures. Let's see, do I wanna do it this way? Yeah. And then all you need to really do, I mean, can't get much easier than this, is put a little dab of glue. You don't need very much because, um, oh, here we go. Because your papers are really thin. Let's see, how did I have that? Okay, so those are pretty much together. And then I just go along here. I know you probably can't see that very well. This is, by the way, really thin. This is just a, like a notebook piece of paper. So you wouldn't want to put too many pages in there. And with these, you don't even really have to like do that whole process of, you know, patting it down and blah, blah, blah. You just go for it. And then you do the same thing there. Oops. I shouldn't probably be doing this on right on my book, but let's see. And we're gonna want a yellow, okay, and pink, and then you do the same thing. Just put a little glue inside of here, and you can see I left it because this is just a. Um, I just folded it in half. That was kind of me winging it. Um, normally, I would use just like that green one I just showed you. It would just be a full accordion like that. But this works. In fact, it actually kind of kind of works better. So now you've got those two glued together and then you just glue this in the middle. Or that's kind of cool too. You could sew it. Like I always say, the possibilities are endless. And then you just make sure everything is glued together. Now what you can do is if you wanted you could add some lace around it or you can just leave it as it is and close this up. Um, if it were thicker and you had like maybe this had you know 10 to 20 pages in that then what I would probably do is is glue them you know glue all your so this is, has room for three signatures so glue your signatures in And then have them like that and make sure they're all glued together this way. Leaving that open, then when I was ready, I would put my um, glue in between there if, if need be. And I could wrap it with something if I chose to do that. Um, you know, or you could sew it as well. But, you know, either way, either way works. I'm just going to close this up. Um, and maybe we'll use it in somewhere in our project. Oh my gosh, glue, come on. It's the only bad thing about this glue is that when you're ready to glue, sometimes it doesn't cooperate. If I kept it upside down, it would probably help, but of course I don't do that. So there you go. You've got a nice little flippy book and you just had one more way learned one more way to bind um, a spine with pages that are single pages and not using a whole lot, except in this case, some scraps. Um, but it works really well. In fact, oh, you can kind of see here, that's a piece of um, surgical tape that's on there. I don't know what I was doing with that, but so that's one way to do it. Um, the ones that we did here, I'm going to move this out of the way for a second. The ones that we worked on in episode one, I want to show these to you. Remember this one is the one that, um, I just threw it together with one, you know, 
pages of paper and just made use of every ounce of that, you know, sh those sheets of paper. So it's nothing special. But um, the wallpaper, I when I put this together, you know, did this, and then I used these. Um, the wallpaper kind of smushed, and see, see how that is right now? And I don't like it. So, I decided what I, I've been dying to use this lace, and it's huge, um, but it's so, so pretty. So, I decided, let's see, which way does this go? That's been the story, story of my life today as well. I decided I am just going to cover this up, and I'm using this lace, and I don't know that I'm going to like it, um, and I don't even know if this little guy's or girl is going to go in our journal or not, but I thought, hmm, why not? I do a lot of pre-planning on some things, and then others, I'm like, nope, we're just going to go for it. If I goof up, that's half the fun. That's called entertainment, right? At least my husband would say that. He is very entertained with my, what I call happy mistakes. But So I'm just going to, this is the back side. And I thought, <laughs> we don't know how this is going to go. I'm going to have to trim it up. But I thought I would just glue it all the way down there. Why not? I could have done a lot of other fancy little things to it. But I just knew that I hated the way that it looked. And it just looked kind of wonky. So... Oh, it kind of looks like a doily. It's going to take a minute. I'll have to push this down a little bit. Well, I don't hate it. I feel like it's going to need some more embellishments on my, on my part, but... Oh, crud. Crud nuggets. What did I do? Oh, that's fine. All right, where are my fabric scissors? I'm just gonna cut this off for now. I kind of like how that looks with the little crinkles in it. So maybe I might glue it so it stays like that. And then I'm gonna have to reinforce some of these because this ribbon or I'm sorry, lace, um, because it was so big, it was, um, it curved, and so there was no way for it, me to get it to lay flat. That was one of the reasons that I hadn't used it either, is because it just, it never cooperated with me, which might be the case in here, but, well, we'll just go with it for it. That. Okay, let's cut this one off. Make sure I got. No more we'll reinforce it. This may be just one of those things that goes into my car for random notes, random thoughts by Angela, which I have often. Oh goodness, I think this is just. I mean, there's still a lot in there, but goodness gracious. Apparently I'm not doing enough projects because I'm not using it fast enough. But you kind of get the gist. And then I could put some other little ribbons on there. I just needed something to cover that up because I thought it looked horrible. And I still think I probably need to put something else on there, but you know, we'll come back to that. We'll let that baby dry. Um, and then this is the other one that we did. And I went ahead after it dried and I used, let's see, I used, I'm trying to start my challenge. These are some of the things that we're going to use throughout and I'll just go ahead and show you because um, it's in here somewhere. So we've got the lace, I've got seam binding, some vintage fabric, obviously wallpaper. Lots of vintage uh, fabric. These are actually, I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? It's just the plastic that was on top of those fabric samples. 
um, upholstery samples. Um, but I used, come on now. Got some more samples, more and more samples. Oh, here we go. So these are um, drapery samples, and this is the one that I used. And I wanted to show the, this to you because if you have anything like this, um, I want to caution you after my little goof up. I'll just throw this over here for now. When I did this, I thought, oh, it would be a fabulous idea for me to really secure this baby journal by using the tape that's on here. And I would not suggest that um, because it was not bendy. And so I had to um, force it. You can see when I, when I move this back, like that is not what I was expecting. It would have been, if I would have just done what I had intended to do to begin with, um, and taken it off, it would have been much better, but it ended up <clears throat> otherwise, like I said, it's secure there. The pages are not going to come out. Um, and it's a great little mini journal. And, you know, if you have a sewing machine, fantastic. You could zip through, I mean that you, it could go through about that many pages, 20 to 25 pages, most sewing machines. But if not, you can just glue that bad boy on like I did for you guys and voila, you're all set. So those are my extra tips for you today. Um, but we are going to go ahead and get started with covering this. And now what I'm going to do is I intend to um, cut this out um, both for the front and the back cover, which I will do off camera and come back. Um, but I'm not going to... Um, adhere it yet because I do want to use this book plate so I'm going to have to um, attach that and um, we may want to add some things as we go uh, depending on um, what this looks like so I'm going to wait to adhere it but what I did do in advance is I want this let's see just imagine for a moment I want when it's finished for this to kind of tuck under here like that because I'm going to use my pinking shears and then I'm going to sew around the entire um, piece just to, you know, so it doesn't fray. Um, but that's all I'm going to use. So I added this on the front and the back just to kind of keep it in place and add a little fun. I thought about um, hiding... Um, a charm tag or something in here and then thought against it. But this, again, is making use of those um, strips of um, fabric samples. So it's just one of these. I cut it in half down the middle and then I sewed it together right here and then added it to the end. So that is as easy as it is. Did the same process. I just, and this time I use Fabri-Tac, fabri tac it down here, put my clamps on like this and waited for it to dry, which led to more procrastination. Hey, I'm back at it. It's fine. So what I did, um, normally here's exactly what you would do. You get it, you get your paper, you find one that's large enough or paper fabric, find a piece that you, um, love and that is large enough to cover it and kind of lay it out and measure, right? And the way I measure um, for these is truthfully because I'm my measuring skills are not that great. Um, I measure from, you know, just the inside of where I want this to tuck under all the way to the edge, which is eight inches. Um, now remember, I'm going to be doing a, um, I'm using my pinking shears, so I might go maybe eight and a sixteenth or, or an eighth. I don't know. One, uh, probably an eighth. That way it will accommodate for me using those pinking shears. And then, um, the top is 10 and a half. So I'll do probably... Oh, 10 and five eighths. 
But in this case, I wanted this pretty pink flower to be right in the middle. So I had to, before the book, where there was anything in it, I just laid it on its back, um, figured out where that flower was, and then um, just traced around the outside of it so that I made sure that flower was in the middle, or and not necessarily in the middle, but on the page. And so you can see that right here. There it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little time out. I'm gonna go cut this up and I'm going to whip a little stitch around it um, and I'll make a duplicate one for the back and then we will talk about next steps. So hang tight. Okay, I am back and I have what we need. So I went ahead and cut these to size and zigzag stitched around three sides. I just left this last side so I would remember which way I should have it go. And we're gonna start with the back because I think it will be fine if we go ahead and put the back on because I'm not intending to decorate it. However, and I don't normally, where am I? I don't normally do this on um, a journal this size, but as I started to think about it, it's already kind of bulky with the wallpaper and the fabric. So I thought it might be a good idea to go ahead and put on something that can be attached um, or that, you know, a ribbon so that people can tie it up pretty. And this is a very important step because generally this is the one I always forget. Um, and then I put the my cover on and I go, oh, crud nuggets, I totally forgot. So it is as easy as um, I'm going to show you my little trick, tricky poo. Cause I, the one thing you don't want is for this to come off. So I have, I usually, when I make these, I have it at least be halfway to the, I've got glue all over myself, halfway, um, into the book. This is just a little bit beyond. So, um, I just go ahead and put some fabric tack down. and make sure I get plenty on there. We can always add more if I need it. And then I'm just going to place it right there. Now, here's the trick that I use on every one of my journals that I do a ribbon or um, fabric closure, and that is, I take another, I just make a T, and I go about an inch in from where I've put down the original ribbon. Oh my goodness, this glue is gonna be, let's give them my bits. And I just re, or reinforce and secure it by adding that extra, whoa, that extra little piece right there. Now, if that, if you're not comfortable with that and you say, hey, I think it needs something else, well, let's just talk about this lovely tape. Moving tape is your friend. And then you can just reinforce it this way as well. Here, I got it. Let me cut that off. So this bad boy is not going to come off. Okay? So now what I generally do is flip it over while it's still all one long piece. And then I decide about how long I'm going to want the tie to be. And I want this one to be pretty long. Well, I'm going to make it a little longer. Always safe to make it longer than shorter. So we're just going to do the same thing here. And 
Wait, wait for the glue. When I initially planned to do this, well, not the whole series, but um, at least the covering of the bindings or of the um, journal, I convinced Dave that he needed to uh, help me and I was going to have him do all the sewing while I was talking. Somehow he got out of that. I don't know exactly how, but I even offered to make him a, a bourbon while he sewed for me and still no dice. So you see how that works out. I'm solo. He's really good at finding, like, uh, tools to problem solve when I'm working on something. So, you know, he is an active participant. Whether he likes to admit it or not. <laughs> um, and I should probably give you forewarning that my children are going to be coming home. And I usually send him a text saying, doing a video. I didn't do that today, so... You might just get to meet my children. All right, so now we've got the front and the back done. And so I'm just going to not use those scissors. I think it's, I thought about this the other day. Um, I, you know, when I, I have fabric scissors that are like really fabric scissors, not just these little baby ones. But for some reason, I can't stop, I just, Love using the ones that I do all my fussy cuts with. And that's about the only scissors I use. And I've been using them for so long. Those are um, close to my heart scissors. And I have probably um, 12, pa uh, 12 pair. Every time I place an order, I order another pair. Um, all right. So now we've got our ribbon closure. And now we're gonna going to go ahead and put the back on. So this is going to be the back. You guys, this can't get much easier than this, right? Um, and you know what, you, just so you know, you would do this no different if this were a sheet of paper. Um, but the one thing that you do need to remember is that, um, you need to be mindful of what kind of glue you're using because you do need something that will go, um, paper to fabric and Fabrifix and Fabri-Tac both work fabulously. Okay. I, oh, and by the way, you know, let's talk about ironing for a minute because at today when I was ironing my newly dyed papers, I thought to myself, you know what? I didn't, I, when I was working in corporate America, corporate America, the dry cleaner was my friend. I did not iron my clothes and I usually bought clothes that I did not have to iron because I hated it so much. However, for some reason, Ironing paper seems to be very cathartic, so I don't know. Or maybe it's just I'm getting older and have more patience for it. I doubt that, but you know, could be. All right, so now that is, look how cute that is. Oops, I, oops, oops, oops. Shoot. So you got to make sure you get it tucked in there. And what I did is I tried to get it as close to the edge as possible, but when I did this, my thought was I would rather have this closer to, uh, I would rather have it going over a little than, um, than too short. So that's why it is like it is. And so now the fun part, because you just get to be messy. Um, you kind of have to work a little bit fast with this. Sorry for my hands being in the way. Um, because this is a pretty big space. I think it's like, ten, what did I say? Ten and some. And here's one of my children right now. Hi, Landon. He must have, he must have heard me uh, talking so he knows I'm doing a video. He's staying far away. All right. There we go. And now carefully, carefully lay this down. And you know, I know lots of people like to use 
phone folders and all of those things and I don't, know, I don't know, tools that I don't even know the names of to flatten out their glue. But I'm kind of into the two hands and 10 phalanges method. Gosh, look how beautiful that is. Now I always have to check. I did pretty good. Um, I do need to snip this off at the end, but I'll wait until the very end. So now we're going to flip this over. I just, I'm in love with this. And this, that was my uh, conundrum because I was like, well, it's so pretty. How much stuff do I want to put on the front and the back? And I think this, I mean, we may be able to wrap this video up pretty quick because I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to do the same process here. So we've got our, our ribbon on. But what I do need to actually put on ahead of time, and this is where you're going to need your help, your virtual help. Just sending me vibes. Okay, so I'd like to put the book plate right there. Um, and, of course, these little brads are not going to be that fantastical holding it down. So we will have to glue it and we're going to glue in on three sides because we want to make sure that someone can place their own little tab in there if they want. So I'm just going to poke that. Hopefully it'll poke through. Can I see it? Barely. God, I can't. Oh, Angela. Okay, let's do over. Okay, let's get it where we want. You know what? Um, when in doubt, use a pen. This, uh, this book plate, by the way, seems like it's a little... I don't know, warped or something. I've had these book plates for probably... No joke, probably 10 years. Um... And they, who were they by? Basic Gray. Um, I don't even know if they make them anymore, but I always intended, I had good intentions to use them, and then I never did. Um, let's see. This is going to be really tricky. Do you see how that has a ledge there? Well, I think that's what we're going to have to put the glue on. I don't know. It's risky, guys. I've never done this with a metal on fabric before, so it'll be a learning experience. Okay, probably have way too much glue. All right, I'm just gonna pull this down so I can see a little bit better. I'm gonna poke those holes through again. Please don't move. And I think I'm gonna re-secure, I'm gonna secure this as well on the back like I did on the front with some tape. Did I get it? Oops, it's not straight. There we go. Yay, I did. Okay, so we're just going to, I didn't put that on the top, did I? Gosh darn it, I did. See what happens when you talk and you try to do something at the same time. No worries. We just dry it off just like that. <laughs> oh, good lord. All right. So now I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to put a little glue. Isn't that funny? And the other thing that I possibly could have done or maybe should have done before I glued this down, just in all my excitement, is measure the inside, but I think we can figure it out. It was sunny, so sunny in the office this morning, which is one of the reasons I, um, another reason I was procrastinating, because I can't do videos in the morning, it's too bright. Um, isn't that just a horrible problem? Uh, so about midday, I realized I hadn't turned the lights on and it actually started getting a little cloudy for a while. And I'm like, what am I doing sitting here in the dark? 
apparently did, didn't phase me. I just kept on working. I don't know that this is necessary, but we're doing it anyway. Okay. Oh, let's see if I didn't, uh, if that's going to not stick. I need to stick something in there so it... So irritating. And the thing is, I knew I was going to do that. Okay, so now we got to make a decision, guys. What shall we... I got some... I grabbed some different options that we can put in here for the book plate, for the back of the book plate. Um, I don't like that. I thought I might, but I don't. That's kind of blah. I'm thinking... Well, I do have um, a piece of my ephemera from my stash. That's actually kind of pretty. But it's really thin, so I think... What do you think about that? But we won't use the little animal stamps. We'll use... Just the plane. I think we should go with that. All right. Decision made. Now we got to measure. Um, so what I'm going to do, because I got ahead of myself, is I'm just going to take a scratch piece of paper and I'm going to estimate. And I want to make sure that it See, the problem is when you change these out, um, you know, the rest is all glued down. So you kind of got to make sure you have something in there that you like. Because, see how what I'm saying is that, you know, you don't want it to fall out of the middle of it. Um, but I just like people to have the option to be able to change it if they want because they might not like my pink paper all right there we go now they can always glue it down oh gosh we'll see how this goes i'm sure you guys are all going you know what there's an easier way you could have done this and there probably is and i'm just not thinking about it today now this is gonna be too small Dag nabbit. Okay, that's okay though. I just know it needs to be a little bit bigger. And this is the opening. We just may maybe make might just make this permanent. I think we probably will. Someone could put a sticker on it. All right, let me cut this, see what happens. Cutting it a little bit bigger because I was off just a smidge. Sorry, I'm off camera there. And I don't think I have any more of this paper, so I better not screw this up. longer than it needs to be because I'm hopeful that I can just, I'm just going to adhere it and make it permanent. When I say adhere it, I just mean I'm going to put this in there and glue the top and I'm going to work to get these underneath here so that they don't, it doesn't come out because and it worked, oh my gosh. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, now we're gluing this bad boy in here. Now somebody really wanted to, they could get this out and it would not damage it. Oh, that looks so precious. Okay. Crisis averted. All right, we're going to go ahead 
Make sure this is where we want it. Looking good. We're on the home stretch, kids. Um, and then I'm going to show you what we're going to work on next, which I'm really excited about. We're going to start to get into the, the guts of the book. And I have got, um, thanks to my procrastination today, have some fun little projects that I added to what I had initially planned that I think we'll be able to do that will make it super, super cute inside. Oh, shoot. There we go. There's another one of my didn't iron at the seam examples. Okay, so we're gonna start with that. Get him all in there. You know, this is interesting. One of my other observations that I had in the last week or two. <laughs> uh, I never, ever have talked to myself. And I know this because I just know. Um, and also because I totally tease my mother because she talks to herself all the time. Um, and so, oh, see, now Demi's home. Hi, Demi. A video. Uh, but now I find that since I've been doing these videos that I talk to myself. Not a lot, but way more than I did. Now I'm becoming my mother. She watches these videos, so she'll get a chuckle out of that. All right. Yay. I'm debating if I'm really going to edit Demi out of there because she's like, Mother, you're so embarrassing. You need to edit that. It's my job. I'm your mother. Embarrassing you is my lifelong challenge. Oh my gosh, you guys, that looks so stinking cute. Okay, now. We pretty much have our cover. We are going to need to put something on here, but let's wait till we get to embellishment day. And now we have our single pages that are bound and gorgeous like they are. We're just going to make them more gorgeous. And then here's what you guys have to look forward to before we go. Um, and don't forget, if you have questions about things you want to see or questions, comment below. Um, or you can do so on our uh, Tour Store U VIP page on um, Facebook. I'd love to hear from you or show me your examples of your fabric covered books. Um, and don't forget to subscribe so you can see our upcoming videos. So we're going to, um, that was another of my procrastination things. We're going to do some mini matchbooks. Um, I'm going to show you how to. Um, Use little magnets in little flip out envelopes. And we're gonna do no cut um, baby journals with uh, fabric and wallpaper and those sheets. And we're going to do possibly, I don't know, we'll see how many episodes we're gonna do. We're gonna do a envelope project, a fold out envelope. Um, ooh, Emily Bloom, I believe, is where I got this idea. She has lovely works of art, and she was my inspo on that. And then these are my pockets that I did um, no cut. So this is just with your wallpaper and your fabric, and then embellished little pockets. And we will do a little pocket for a tag. Look at that, peekaboo. There's the bee. We'll make one of those. And oh, here's another one. This is the one I don't like. And we maybe will finish this together. Um, ooh, what happened? 
I just, it, it's not speaking to me, but I gave up on it. Um, so we, we might come back to that, but we'll make some envelopes. We'll make some window pockets, um, some mini journals and some other little folders and matchbooks on our ne upcoming episode. So come on back and until next time, my friends, take time to just be. Cheers.